Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jessica, if you are. Today is my very first update for my 2024 Pan Those Eyeshadow Series. I did a complete refresh in the month of January as most creators do and I'm excited to update you on the four shades that I'm currently working on. This is now my fourth year participating in this project and it is a lot of fun. It's actually what got me into panning and got me into YouTube actually for that matter. But this project was created by Alexi who had a channel on YouTube, not currently active, but I always like to give credit to her for creating this project that has taken off across the panning community and everyone's kind of made it their own and has their own little particular set of rules to it. So for my particular set of rules, this year I'm currently working on four shades of eyeshadow at a time with ultimately the goal to hit pan on them. But if I use them at least 30 times, and it has to be over a course of at least three months of use, and I still haven't hit pan on that shade, then I do give myself permission most times to roll that shade out, unless I am so, so close that I think I can get there with just a few more uses. Sometimes I'll go for that if I'm not too tired of the shade. I'll tell you right now, I don't have any rollouts this month. It is the first month of the year, so that's not really that surprising, but it's unusual for me. I almost always have at least one rollout, so just don't get too excited right away, but I am going to include some of my favorite eyeshadow looks that I created with these shades at the end of the video and kind of talk through them, what shades I used and how I put the looks together. So if you're interested in seeing some of those, definitely stay tuned to the end. But I am going to go through all of those shades. I'm going to show you comparisons from last month to this month, tell you how many times I've used them. And that's going to be it, a little shorter video for you today. And that's good for me too, because I have a lot of things that I'm trying to get done today. So we're going to get right into the video. But before we do, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you as a part of my YouTube community. And go ahead and give this video a quick thumbs up before we get started so you don't forget later. It's always much appreciated. Just going in the order that I selected from last month, I'm going to start with the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. I'm working on the pink shimmer shade in here called Supernova. Here's a swatch of Supernova and I'm going to be showing this to you on my cat scratched hands. Okay, this is kitten life right here. I'm not being abused, it's just uh, my kitten loves me very much, especially as a chew toy. So I hope that doesn't distract too much from this gorgeous, gorgeous shade. You can see it has a really pretty shift to it. It almost has like a goldy orange shift with a pink magenta. Love this shade. It's already one of my favorites in the palette and I'm really excited that I get to pan it. So here's what it was looking like last month when I first brought it into this project. I reached for it six times during the first month, which isn't terrible. I wish I'd reached for it a couple more times, but here's what it's looking like today after those six uses. And I think you should be able to see a nice little dip starting to form on this. It already had a dip to start off with, but it's such a soft shade that you really can see some change in it pretty quickly. And I know that I'll be able to hit pan on this one, maybe in like 18 to 20 uses is my estimation. So I've still got some work ahead of me in order to get to that pan, but this is still the month of February, still the month of pink. I've already had so much fun creating a lot of pink looks with this shade, and I'm excited to create even more along with the next shade that I'm gonna talk about. So that is all for Supernova. She's staying in, as you already know, but I'm just excited that I get to keep working on her and I know that I'll have a panel on this one eventually, maybe by the next update. I think I am gonna hone in on this shade in the next month and try and hit pan on this before the next update because I think it's the most realistic one for me to be able to accomplish and I wanna have a rollout for you next update. I'm sure you would appreciate that as well. And it doesn't hurt to mention that I am filming this video about three weeks after I filmed my introduction video, so it hasn't been a full month of progress. So if I had another week to use this palette, I probably could have gotten two or three more uses on it. But all the same, I'm trying to kind of catch up on my filming schedule. I was quite delayed on my introduction. So I moved my first update up about a week and the next one I'll probably move up even a few days before that so that I can get more close to around like the 8th, 9th, 10th of the month filming these videos for a mid-month update. The next shade I've been working on comes from this little quintet from ColourPop. This is the Rumor Has It Quintet. And I love these little colorful five pans that came out with a few years ago. I have two of them and I really enjoy them both. I have this one and a green version and they both have great quality. And I just love having like a monochrome color story when I want that color or when I want a monochrome look. These are fun to reach for. And of course, I have to bring in a blue palette. Someone made a comment on my introduction video that I should call this project Pan Those Blue Eyeshadows because I'm always bringing blues into this project. And and, you know, I don't hate it. It kind of makes it fun and funny. And it also pushes my creativity and forces me to reach for blues during all times of the year. That is for sure. <laughs> The shade I've been working on is this first one here, Do Tell. So here's what Do Tell was looking like at the beginning of last month. I reached for this three times in the past month, which is not great, but hey, better than nothing. And here's what Do Tell is looking like today. 
And it does have that fleur de -lis embossing on the shade that makes it pretty fun to track the progress on. So I think you should see a slight more blurring effect to that fleur de -lis than you, maybe last month, which proves that I used it, even though we don't see a dip forming yet. I could have done better with this one, that's for sure. But it does have a slight little, tiny little dip starting to form. It's quite a powdery shade. I should be able to work at it pretty quickly if I just remember to reach for it. I plan on mixing this in with some pink shades to create more purple looks since I might not want to be wearing blue to work all the time. I don't mind wearing purple to work, but blue is a little bit of a stretch. Unfortunately, I've tried that a few times with this light blue shade and because it's almost like a turquoise blue, like almost like a greeny blue, I'll swatch it for you. It doesn't blend with the pinks as well as some other blues. It kind of almost gets like a browny purple that it makes not the prettiest purple so I don't know how effective I will be with that strategy but I'm gonna go for it all the same here it is in the swatch and you really can see in the swatch how kind of green pulling it is a more greenish seafoam blue but I'm going to experiment with it see if I can find some creative ways to use it and hopefully have better progress for you on this one by the next update shade number three comes from another Huda Beauty palette this is the Rose Quartz palette I love this palette so gorgeous and I've been having fun just reaching for it and having it out on my vanity. I'm working on another shimmer pink in here. The shade is called Joy and here's what Joy was looking like last month when I first brought it into the project. Joy is definitely a shade that I reached for before but it didn't have a huge dip going on it by any means. I reached for the shade seven times during the first month and here's what Joy is looking like today. And I think this one too, you'll be able to see a little dip starting to form on this pan. This is such a pretty shade. I've really enjoyed reaching for it during the month of February. It's just been the perfect color story for this time of year. And I'm just always pleased to have this palette around as a whole. So having a special focus shade in here has just been really fun. Here it is swatched and you can see that Joy also has like a slight duochrome effect to it. Almost like maybe a champagne hint of blue duochrome. I feel like you can see more shift in person than you can on the camera but both of these just beautiful shades to play with and I have been quite enjoying them and I can't wait to share with you some of the looks I created with them um, in the end of this video so definitely stay tuned for that. Joy is another shade that I am pretty confident I should be able to hit pan on quite easily. It's another one I'm going to hone in on during the next few weeks and see if we can get some nice beautiful progress on it. A really deep deep pan or maybe even a little baby baby glimmer of a silver pan in there by the next update. Oh and I wanted to mention that this shade and the next shade I'm going to talk about I brought in using the prompts that um, I think her name is Lainey. Yes, Lainey's prompts. I used her prompt to select this shade. It was any shade that started with the letter J and uh, J for Jessica and uh, J for Joy. Perfect. The next prompt I pulled of Lainey's was something that I don't want to pan. So I decided to reach for a black matte, which was kind of crazy. I know. I don't know what I was thinking for myself, but I brought it from a palette that I really did want to pan, my Natasha Denona My Dream palette. I love this palette and it hasn't gotten the love it deserves, so I wanted to have this out on my vanity this time of year and I want to have a pan on it before this year is up and uh, maybe it'll be in black as black, but um, it depends on how patient I am. So there is black as black. Yep, it's a black matte. Nothing revolutionary. I'll swatch it for you. Do you want to see what a black matte looks like? Because, um... It's a very good one, I'll tell you that. It might just be the blackest black. Okay, there it is in the swatch. It actually doesn't look that great in the swatch. I'm not doing a great job of swatching it. I could really build this up if I wanted to, but um, it's black enough. And I've been wearing this as my eyeliner almost every single day. Here's what it was looking like when I first brought it into the project. I reached for it 16 times in the first month, and I hardly think you'll be able to tell. Here's what it's looking like today. And because it's such a dark color, uh, will you be able to see that tiny little dip that's starting to form? There is a tiny, tiny, tiny dip, I promise you. But I'm surprised it's not bigger than it is with the amount of times I've reached for it. That just goes to show you how pigmented this shade is and how little of it I need every time I line my eyes with it. I did do one look where I put the black all over the base of my eye and then topped it with shimmers. And I need to do that more because it would definitely use up a lot more product than just using it as a liner. I'm basically just now using it to top my cream gel eyeliner just to make it last longer, smudge it out. And, um... You know, that's fine, but it's not very exciting. It doesn't really push my creativity and that's what this project's all about. So hopefully I can do a little bit more with this black shade in the next couple weeks. And it's probably gonna take me well over 30 uses to hit pan on this and probably well over three months. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep the stamina past that time, but we'll see. I'm gonna just do my best until that point and then make a decision once we get there. I really do want to pan in this palette. It just might not be the black. I might have to move on to another shade so that 
I'm not just using the black in this palette because what's the point of that? Like I could reach for any black, but all these other shades in here are gorgeous and I want to use those too. That's for sure. So that is the last shade. I've shown you all four. Again, nothing's coming in, which is kind of a bummer. I love bringing in new shades. It's always like my favorite part of these videos, but just stay tuned. You know, it's coming, coming in the very near future and it's going to be exciting when it does. It'll be that much sweeter because we had to wait for it. But friends, all is not lost because I do have one exciting update to share with you. Even though I haven't hit a pan in this project, this is the video where I like to update all of you on my pan percentage. So I'm keeping track of all of the shades of eyeshadow in my collection and all of those shades of eyeshadow that have a pan on them. And that just helps me to have a little numerical tracker that keeps me motivated and gets me excited because I just love numbers. So last month I had 435 eyeshadows in my collection. Of those 435, 68 of them had eyeshadow pan on them and my pan percentage last month was at 15.63%. And I have hit one new pan in the last month, even though it wasn't in this project. I did have a pan in my project level up, which I will link right over here if you want to see me talk about that pan. But that adds one additional pan to my pan percentage. So I now have 69 pans out of my 435 shades of eyeshadow which brings my pan percentage to a whopping 15.86 percent so my pan percentage did go up even if just by a small 0.23 percent it still feels good and it gets me that much closer to my goal i would love to hit 20 percent by the end of the year and um i think i probably can I think I'm going to do it. So uh, maybe I'll even blow that goal out of the water like I did last year. Uh, but I like, you know, setting my nice reachable goals that will make me feel satisfied <laughs> no matter what. So now I'm going to share with you some of those eyeshadow looks I created. You're going to see a lot of pink. So I hope you like pink because... I really enjoyed playing with it. This first look, I was just embracing the whole pink fantasy. I had a pink lip, a pink beanie, pink glitter, and you can bet your bottom dollar that I have both pink shades in this look, along with a lot of other pinks. Lucky for me, these pink shades paired beautifully with my Pan That palette that I'm currently working on, and I had a lot of fun just going all out with this like super feminine Barbie look. This next look is the look that I was referring to where I used black all over my lid as a base and then I topped it with some shimmers. I'm pretty darn sure that Supernova is on this look in the outer part of the lid. And then I also have a gold colored shade. I believe it is the um, Duala shade that I had pan on in my Project Level Up on the inner part of the lid. And then I even topped that with more glitter. I was in a glittery mood that early part of the year. This next look is a look I wore to work and I believe I have joy all over the lid in this look. And I think I just put like a very subtle purple wash in the crease, maybe? It's kind of hard to tell in the lighting, but I am confident that joy is the featured shade on the lid in that look. Here's me experimenting with blue. I have Dutel in this look all over that inner part of my crease. I then also paired it with a lot of shades from my Frozen 2 Elsa palette um, from ColourPop. And so I was just having a lot of fun feeling like silvery, icy, Elsa frozen vibes. And I had just gotten my hair done to a super icy toner. So it was just kind of fun to play off that in that look. And I really like how it turned out. It was really pretty. Something I just wore around at home. Here's another pink look that I wore to work. Again, this has joy all over the lid. And this one also, you know, I don't even know what's in the crease, but joy is in this look. And I think this one has supernova on the outer part of the lid as well, just very, very lightly. I mean, this is going to get kind of repetitive. Here's another look of me uh, wearing a pink lid. <laughs> I think this one has Supernova all over the lid instead of Joy. And then I believe I topped the center part of it with something else just to kind of give it a different shift. But I couldn't tell you what it is. Sorry. Here is a purple look that I wore to work. I love wearing looks like this during this time of year. I love purple, as many of you already know. And I believe I have Joy in this look. And if not Joy, I might also have Dutel mixed in with a pink to kind of get that purpley look in the crease. But don't quote me on that. It's possible. It's possible it's there, but I'm really not sure. I really should make better notes about this. Hope you don't mind. Hopefully you just enjoy seeing the looks. Okay, this is a really pretty kind of like neutral pink look I wore. So I put neutrals all in the crease and then put Supernova and Joy, I believe, together on the lid. And it looks quite wearable and neutral, but also really pretty. So one of my favorite looks I created, especially for like a wearable work look. Okay, this I was just feeling the Valentine's vibes. I put lots of pink and purple on my eyes with also like some duochrome from my Jewels and Gem palette from Odin's Eye. And then of course I'm wearing the pink sweater with the adorable like pearls. I was just really feeling the Valentine spirit. That was last week and really cute look. I don't even know how much Panda's eyeshadows is in there, but 
at least one of them, I'm sure. Another pink look, this I wore in a recent video. This has Supernova and Joy all over the lid mixed in with other pink and purple mattes. And then a really nice like pink shimmer in the inner corner. I thought it was really pretty. And this is a very similar variation on that previous one, but this one has a little bit more purple in that outer corner just to deepen it up a little bit more. This was a very pretty like light muted lavender purple look that I created. I forgot to take a picture of it until later in the day, so I'm sorry the lighting's not great, but this one also has joy all over the lid with just like a very subtle purple in the crease. And then I think I tapped with some duochrome over it just to make it feel a little bit more special. And this look, I'm happy to say, contains all four eyeshadows from this project. I wore this eyeshadow look on Super Bowl. Doesn't it seem so fitting for Super Bowl? You know, I just scream Super Bowl for me. <laughs> if you can't tell, I don't really care that much about football. But, you know, I'm happy for everybody who does. You know, don't take that personally. I'm, I enjoyed watching the game. It was fun. Anyway, so this one has do tell on the inner corner. I blended that in with some pinks to try and get like a purple, but it didn't look great. Like this is kind of what I'm talking about. It kind of just looks muddy when you blend it in with the pinks. I did my best. And then I used Joy and Supernova all over the lid and put some more purple into the outer crease. And then of course, I should have said this with all the looks. If I'm wearing a black liner in these looks, I'm topping it with the blackest black shade from Natasha Denona. Doesn't it just stand out? It's, she's a star. And this is my last look. This was the look I wore to work yesterday. And uh, shocking, it's just another variation of a very subtle, kind of more neutral pink look. My go-to look this month. And it probably will be for the next couple of weeks. And I'm not mad about it at all. So those are all my looks. I really hope you enjoyed seeing them. If you did, comment your favorite one down below. I love hearing from you. If you have any ideas that you'd like me to try out with these four shades, let me know. I love getting inspiration from all of you and I've created some of my favorite looks with some of your help. So thank you in advance for that. Thank you everybody for watching this video today and coming and visiting my channel. I appreciate you all so much for being here. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. But until then, bye.